millimeter focal length. So I got to see what I got for an eyepiece that'll help with Mars. Well, you know, I, I was good because uh, I I'm 480 millimeters and yeah. the the Bader with the small 2.25 Barlow gives me about a three. So it's um, oh, that's... you know, I'm I'm about 135. I'm just under 140 times, and that's just about perfect. And yeah. you know, they all, yeah, they all they always say that oh, you know, it gets dim. I had actually had to put an ND filter on last night. It was mm -hmm. Mars was so bright. I had to put like a 0.6 on <laughs> just just to see it properly because it was so bright. Well, I've got a 4.8 for my uh, refractor, so that would work out about right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that would work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's an amazing eyepiece, by the way. If you ever yeah. want to get a zoom, the, the Bader Mark IV is uh, yeah. really nice. Hi, Joe. Well, How you doing, Reg? I see you're on top of the hill. I, I'm on the hill, but uh, we're having, we can't turn on the computer, no power to the computer. So uh, the uh, John and Gary and Dan Posey are working on that, Dan remotely. So I oh. just wonder if it uh, might have had uh, a jump from a winter uh, windstorm or something like that that shut her down. So maybe it's the COVID virus it got. I don't know. <laughs> Well, you know, it's my consulting days. My the first thing I always check was the power cord. Yeah, I just saw the whole <laughs> out of the wall. Yeah. In fact, they've done it several times. <laughs> uh, they do have power at the wall, though, right? They check that. Uh, yeah, there there is electricity in the building, and the lamps <laughs> are being plugged into the socket, and they work, and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. so, Sometimes I, the most fundamental things stop you. <laughs> Uh, Chris, did you did you say that you got a new mount as well? Um, well, I got a head. Uh, I was using one of these. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, uh, yeah, a tilt and pan thing there. So yeah. I got one that's got a geared control. Oh yeah, okay, uh, that's that, good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I've got that. Is it a Manfrotto gear? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got that geared head, and that's really nice. Yeah, it's the junior the comet. Yeah. Because it, I could. I could mount my binoculars on and get it all lined up nice, nice. And then I would take that off and put the camera on with exactly the same mounting plate. And the comet was dead smack in the middle of the field. Very good. That was really nice. Yeah, that's that's a Junior 410. They uh, yeah. they make a heavy duty one, but it's like yeah, twice the price. For a video camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're good though, because if you get them lined up with North, you only have to turn one knob to keep tracking. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the knob that that has the full range of traffic tracking all the way around. Yeah, yeah, it works very well. I'm just going to swing it around so you can see the view to the west. Nice the sunset, sunset tonight. <laughs> yeah, beautiful evening here. The uh, when we came in the. Uh, the uh, console uh, at the weather station for the interior uh, was reading uh, 26 degrees. It got up to 28 and a half. So we have uh, trying to cool down the scope. And if we can't get the computer running, what we'll do is, um, there's Peter. Hi, Peter. And uh, uh, what we'll do is uh, just uh, drive it with a paddle, I guess, and, and steer it around. See how it works. Yeah, we've got a finder on there, so uh, we'll see if that's aligned. It could be uh, kind of a, a tedious process. We'll see. The idea was is that we just flash it up, uh, go to Sky X, and, and go to Jupiter, and then line it up from there and uh, twig everything. But I don't think that's going to work. No, if you can't get the computer started up, that will not. Uh, that bit will not happen. That's right. Hi, Diane. Hi, you're outside. At the VCO. Um, oh, Play my, oh, wait, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Just, Are you testing out the new scope? Well, we're, we're, we're trying to do something here. So uh, I'm just going to show you the, my accomplices here. Uh, that is Gary Sedan in the mask. And uh, John McDonald is kneeling down at the bottom here. I don't think I can get oh, okay. him. That's not a good, that's not a good uh, profile. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go out now. 
Richie they, Christian, they, David. They, they already kicked me out of there once. They said I was uh, talking too loud. When I go in there, I have to put on my mask here. Might be okay. an improvement now. Oh, you say I leave it on, I won't be hurt. But uh, oh, go. You got, is that, are those stars? Yeah, there's stars on there. Oh, yeah, we're nice. all lined up. Actually, if you studied, I bet you could identify them, Diane. <laughs> oh, I didn't make the mask. If I had made the mask for you, I'd probably. Yeah, so many. How's Mr. Webb doing? Oh, just brilliant. I went out and walked 18 holes today and shot the worst round of golf of 2020. Ah. So, so I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping for snow. The year is improving, is it? <laughs> I know it's, it long stopped improving, but it didn't get bad. Oh. I'll tell you what, though. The day started beautifully. I walked outside at six o'clock. There was Orion in all its glory. I saw uh, Orion this morning. Venus is up. Uh, before I went to bed last night, Mars was well situated as well as Saturn and Jupiter. And so that's pretty amazing from a, a visual planet point of view, just stepping outside. So, and I bought a uh, field flattener for my uh, little portable telescope um, to discover only that the nose piece is too long to achieve uh, focus. Uh, however, duct tape allowed me to take the thing off and glue it together long enough to know that you can actually get it focused. So now I've just got to get the right uh, little uh, threaded pieces to make it the right length. And maybe I'll start taking some pictures at some point. Nice. So there you go. You asked, and that's kind of my day. That was a pretty good day. Yeah. Saved by duct tape. Yeah, I get to 18,000 steps and nine kilometers of walking wow. today. So I, oh, I, I fall so asleep in this, that's why. So oh, did you do that up, up at our, our oh, there Ridge? Go. Maybe you can. There's Gary. Yeah. Gary. Just in case you think I'm making it up. No, oh, very good. Mm. I think the phone made it up, actually. Did you get the computer running? No, the scope power, the yeah. computer power supply is close. Well, we're going to probably uh, keep you guys on, but we're going to be doing some technical stuff. We're waiting until uh, I see Jupiter up there. It'll be uh, behind it's behind the trees right now. We'll be able to zoom in on that and see if we can focus this thing. So that'll be the excitement of the night to begin with. So uh, works for me. I'll, co I'll come back later with breaking news as it develops, okay? But you have an excellent meeting. Oh, good. We'll keep you, uh, we'll keep you in our... Keep monitoring this channel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. So. so, Michael, are you still going up to Arbutus Ridge for golf? I'm gonna mute this. Yeah, I drove up there today. I had to give the, the old Porsche a, a blowout today. Yeah, that's a good idea once in a while. Yeah, that might have been the highlight of the day, actually. <laughs> the, the drive. I'm amazed at how many people are commuting from that area into town. Because I went up there about 6.30 this morning, and it was just nose to tail traffic coming down the Malahat from the north. Wow. It's a real problem, all that commuting. And people are not all working yet, from what I hear. So yeah, it's a... Uh, and the commuter bus from Duncan, from what I hear, uh, packed it in. So there, there's even more people driving than before. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably they could, couldn't get six feet away from each other in the bus. <laughs> well, I think it was toast before the pandemic hit. Oh, I see. Okay. It was, I think they were, most of the customers, I think, were um, going to the um, naval base. Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, anyway, it was a gorgeous day up there today. Good. If it's like this tomorrow, I might haul the 10 inch down to Cattle Point and have a look at Mars tomorrow night. Oh, it's putting on a good show, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Great. Now, for those of us who are just joining us, you may notice that Reg is. Um, 
with uh, friends at the VCO. Um, they're hopefully going to give us an update of uh, how things are working with the new telescope. Um, unfortunately, we're having some technical issues where the computer will not start up. Oh. But, so. A dead power supply. Yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? Uh, it's been a long time since it's got lonely and died on us. <laughs> oh. Power supplies are cheap. Yeah. Actually, there's a second computer up there. They should be able yeah, to that's do right. a swap -a Can you hear us, uh, John? Oh. Hi, Reg. Can you hear us? Yes, I, we can. Yeah. Joe had a suggestion. Yeah. There's, isn't there two computers up there? There's three. There's three. Um, can't can't you just take a power supply to one and put it in the other? We we could. We could. Probably too much work right now. Well, we're thinking the first thing we want to do is steer it by hand and and see what we can see with uh, that way. Yeah. Because we don't want to spend too much time just playing with computers tonight. That's well. If it's if it's dead, bring it down and I'll fix it. Oh, so um, Dan said that he was going to take the power supply out of the other black one that the motherboard died on and just swap power, uh, just use that power <laughs> supply. Do you want us to bring down both of them? Well, if Dan's going to do it, go for it. If if yeah. if yeah, you, he, he if you want me to do it, I can do it as well. I think we might take you up on the offer. Dan is very busy with elections right now, I think. Yeah, he is, yeah, I guess. I fairly, fairly busy, all yeah. right. Yeah. 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 You know what, Joe? Um, there's a gazillion connections on this computer. It would be great if we didn't have to unplug them and we actually did the swap up here with everything. Is it possible for you to come up and do it or not? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tomorrow's like good. Better idea? Does that sound like a better idea to you? Or you know what sure. we could do? We could, label the, we could label the connections. Maybe we can do that. I can go up tomorrow and do it. That's not a big deal. Okay. okay great. Yeah, we have to clear it with Eric. So. Yeah. We'll just All uh, right. a little bit after 7.30, but we'll just give it a, a, a little bit longer to uh, to see if anybody else is showing up. Um, just to notice, uh, to anybody who's arrived since, uh, you'll notice that Reg, uh, his screen is showing the, the VCO, so they are up there. Uh, Gary, John, and Reg are at the VCO at the moment and joining us from there. I'm the chief cheerleader. <laughs> uh, Jupiter is hiding behind the trees right now. We're, uh, we're going to try and find it. I can see it standing right here, but over at the scope, it's not quite. You're right, it's only going to be about 10 minutes. So maybe you can just move the scope over a bit there, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. Uh, we, have we got a crescent wrench to undo the pier? I think we'll do that. Yeah, could you imagine? Eh? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> Perhaps not. <coughs> so you can use that uh, telescope without the computer running it. Yeah, easily. Yeah, easily. Yeah, so there's, it a, there's a joystick like control. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll see how well it works before we uh, brag about our achievements. <coughs> This is very exciting. It is. It is. Breaking news from the hill. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. Live from the hill. <laughs> I thought it was cool when uh, we had the live view from out in the chosen, too. That was damn yeah, cool. Yeah. I should have had a CNN hat or something. Yeah, exactly. Here. You should have had a, a, a Rask jacket, you know, a microphone. This is Anderson Cooper reporting. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Well, while we're waiting for the stars, we can be part of the meeting. Right? Yeah, well, that's what we're, we're that? doing, yeah. Yeah. You can be our talking heads. There we are, yes. <laughs> it's very Speaking of Anderson Cooper. <laughs> yeah. It's very impressive what Reg has done to connect the focus to the scope, you know. 
It's right it, up there. It, it is uh, pretty primitive, actually. Oh, it's, it's your genius. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if it works. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll get started as it's a little bit after uh, 7.30. So good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, another evening of Astro Cafe. Um, we have a crew uh, at the VCO at the moment. So uh, Reg, Gary, and John are up there um, uh, battling some technical issues. Uh, if you've just joined us, um, they, the computer seems to have died. Um, but on the other hand, they can still um, manually move the... Um, uh, the, uh, the telescope around. So we're going to have a look and see if it's uh, how well it's working because uh, those of you who were with us, um, I guess it was last week, heard about the installation of this uh, replacement scope that we have at the moment. So maybe uh, Reg, would you like to say a few words of what you're hoping to accomplish tonight? Or? Well, what's, what we're going to try and do is uh, possibly, first of all, uh, train it on a bright planet to uh, see if we can get our finder lined up on it and then maybe hunt around for a nice star field and take some photos with the star field and see if there's any distortion or, or problems with the uh, the system. Uh, the only other shot we took was a Polaris. We can't replicate that here because uh, there's a tree in the way uh, at the VCO. But, uh, We'll uh, play around with that, and I think that's about it tonight. We're not going to try any deep sky photography because we've got a 91% a or 94% moon that rose at 6.30, and it's coming up fast, so it won't be a real dark sky. But it's a beautiful night here, and uh, it's a shades of uh, great things to come, I think. Yeah. You could point it at the moon, you know. <laughs> Burn something out. <laughs> I can see the moon through the trees off to the one side there, actually. It's a, but it's going to be a long time before we can point the scope at it. Hey, Randy, this one was for you, I think. This is a, my sky and telescope came today, and it has a picture of the crescent Venus and the slimmest of crescents. That is I don't know if you've seen that one or not. That's lovely. Yeah, it's a... It's really cool. I didn't do it. I didn't take it. <laughs> Great. Well, while we're waiting um, uh, for, for uh, to get some updates from the VCO, perhaps we um, uh, can uh, see if there's anybody else who wants to say anything. I know um, Dave had um, wanted to bring a webinar to our attention, and we'll try and get that on our um, page, as I assume the seats are limited. So but uh, maybe, Dave, you could tell us about it. I'll no, give, you, give you an update on that. It, uh, my wife being an alumni of the U, well, Professor Emeritus at the University of Alberta, she got the note today. Uh, on October the 3rd, uh, U of A is going to have a, a webinar uh, that's going to look at the Mars 2020 Perse Perseverance rover mission. Um, it'll be this October the 6th uh, at about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, which is a Tuesday morning. Uh, the speaker is Chris Hurd, and Chris Hurd is a geologist who's been studying uh, planet geology and the solar system geology for quite a while through the use of meteorites. He's the curator of the meteorite collection at the U of A, which is the largest meteorite collection in Canada, and he's an expert in meteorites from Mars. He's a member of the Perseverance rover mission team, and his role is to determine what samples they should set aside to have for a return to Earth uh, mission later. So what will be posted on the, the, the web page eventually is uh, the connection that will allow you to, uh, uh, to join in to, this, to the webinar. And they will send, when you do register, they will send you a specific email that has you the tag that allows you to get into the webinar. Uh, Chris is a really nice guy. We, I've, I've met him several times. and. Uh, very well spoken. Yeah, and thanks for bringing that to our attention. It sounds quite interesting. And uh, hopefully some of the members will be able to uh, attend if interested. And again, we'll try and get that on the Astro Cafe um, site um, in the next little while. Um, there was also uh, some photos from Edmonton, but we're not sure, do you know, if you can well, I've, I've got them up. We'll see how they come up. Yeah, we'll see if we can get them to display. Uh, normally, Reg would do this, but they're not yeah. on the website yet. <laughs> so, uh, we'll let me see if I get share a screen here. 
Okay, desktop will do it. Share. Oh, that's what okay. We're... Can you see that? Well, you can see so your desktop. desktop. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's Ab Abder Anwar. The first one is a couple of uh, photographs that he took uh, out at Black Nugget Lake, which is the observatory where they're putting the new telescope. It's out about an hour and a bit east of Edmonton in a fairly dark area. So let's see if we can get that to come up. There it is on the right side. So it's gradually oh, stuff yeah. is gradually going to the right. So I'll have to, to try and I'll have to shuffle over. everything over here. Yeah. Uh, Get this thing over here. Cut that out. Come on. My computer's being a little slow. <laughs> there we go. So that's his, his usual uh, edge, uh, eight inch edge HD, uh, total time of about five minutes. Mm. Uh, he's got a 2X wow. Marlowe and uh, ASI 1600 millimeter RGB filters on it. Uh, so he's He's got a very nice photograph of the moon. And by comparison, this is uh, one from Damien Peach, and that's his. So not too shabby. And then the second one is another one of his, but this one is where he has, uh, he has taken the image and derotated some of them to, to make them line up. So he's used some uh, process to derotate the, the various images to get them all stacked in time. And that just gives it a little crisper. Can you use the zoom feature there? I, right below the photo? I might be able to. There, there we go. go. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's pretty impressive. And then the last one, this is uh, this is also Abdur. He's using the same C8 and, and the same uh, instruments, and he's taking pictures of Uranus. Oh wow! And these are its moons. Hmm. Hmm. You focus the planet so you get the see the moons a little better. Incredible. And then. That's that's where they are. If you look at their their orbits, that's exactly he's he's got them exactly in the in the right spot. So four, one, two, three, four of Uranus. That's pretty impressive. Very impressive. There we go. Okay, well, thank you, Dave. That's great. And we'll get those uh, hopefully linked onto the website. Yes, I um, sent those to Reg already. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, at this point, uh, nobody else had stepped forward with a topic, so uh, we'll go to members. Did anybody want to have anything they'd like to share? Uh, yes, I have uh, the slideshow from last week of the uh, VCO. Right. The initial. Yeah. yeah, please. Yes, I forgot about that. Sorry. Yes, you did mention that. Okay, so this was um, our initial, what would you call it? Uh, initial try, I guess, mounting the uh, telescope um, about a week ago. So there were four of us there. And uh, just to let you know, if you go to our Zenfolio site, the Zenfolio site is raskvic.zenfolio.com, which you can also link from our Victoria Center website if you click on media. And you'll see the um, album that I've created right up at the top here in the, <clears throat> in the featured galleries. Um, I'm just gonna quickly cycle through these. These are photos taken with a GoPro, so there's um they're wide angle shots but they're kind of interesting 
So uh, I'll just sort of voice over them as we go through them. Um, they're not terribly large photos, so I'm not going to make them full screen. But you, you can certainly do that at home if you want to uh, go back and have a closer look. So first thing we did was assess the existing situation because we hadn't been up there for months. So we had to really see how the mount had been left. As you can see, it was uh, the counterweights were resting on a, on a prop and uh, all taped in place. So we removed all that stuff and uh, we uh, we're following uh, NRC's uh, protocol, so we were washing our hands and uh, wearing masks and the usual stuff that we're all getting used to these days. Um, so the first thing we did was uh, just check out the mount to make sure that uh, it was still operational and make sure that we got the locks off it. And uh, then we, uh, went out to Reg's car and uncrated the, the telescope. This is a 12.5 inch Ritchie Kretchen telescope are the ones that it replaced it was a 16 inch. So this is a smaller one, um, but it is a research grade telescope and uh, we're pretty excited about it. So I'm, I'm glad the guys are up there tonight uh, working on that. Um, this was created and sitting in Reg's uh, storage area. So he was thrilled to get get it out of there <laughs> since he lives in a condo. He doesn't have a lot of space. So we grabbed it and uh, moved it up the uh, sidewalk. Uh, for those who are interested on the right hand side top corner of this photograph, you'll see the uh, weather station that's up there. You can find a link to that if you go to our observatory page on our website if you're interested in what the weather's like on the top of the hill. It's quite interesting weather because uh, it's quite different than the uh, floor of the hill. So, um, managed to get it in the door without bashing anything and uh, stuck it on the floor and then we had to get the uh, mount freed up Took a little bit of waving of hands and planning to uh, get that all going. Reg was well prepared as usual, and he had uh, photographs of how everything looked before it was all taken apart and our 16 inch was shipped off. So we were working from that as well, consulting it with it anyway. Uh, obviously the first thing we had to do was change the um, counterweights get them roughly uh, in a position where we could not put too much stress on the mount uh, as we moved it freely. And uh, once we consulted with some of the photographs to see how things were done before, we got brave and unlocked it and moved it around, cleaned it up a little bit and hoofed that scope up on there and slid it on. And it was pretty, went pretty well as, as a matter of fact. We were quite happy with ourselves. Uh, swung it around and now we're starting to uh, balance the scope. Um, uh, I'm the safety, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> the, other guy, the other guys are actually doing the balancing. And more balancing both axes. It bells pretty easily. That mount is such a sweet thing to work with. And uh, pretty well got her done. You can tell Gary's the engineer. He's always in there. <laughs> I can say that because he's probably not listening. So um, we didn't use the computer then, just like we are not using the computer tonight either. Uh, we just used the uh, paddle. You can see John actually has the, the uh, joystick paddle in his hand and he's just manually parking the scope. 
that's the normal park position for the scope, whether it's this one or the bigger one. And we had to have some I was there shots, of course. So these were, I think, taken by John. Yeah. And uh, we got a lot of the cables out of the way, just tucked them out of into the mount a little bit to get them so they wouldn't catch. And uh, verified our work was suitable. We're done. So you can go through those and have a look yourself if you want to. Um, you can find it on our Zenfolio page. And uh, I don't know if, I guess Reg is going to go through this later, is he, Chris? Um, the, or, uh, the, yeah, I, or I'm not sure if he's going to be able to from there, but. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I can always <laughs> come, come back in and share later if we need to. Yeah. So there are some things that are on the website for this week anyways. So uh, do you want me to show that? The, the um, go through the website? Well, first of all, what uh, maybe you can just, uh, is there any update from what you're able to do at the moment? And then, yeah, maybe you could. It, it's, uh, we're having a bit of trouble finding uh, the thing uh, in with the telescope uh, because uh, a variety of parameters. So it's a, a slowly developing story at this time. Sure. So, uh, yeah. What I, I could could do if I could I share the screen and see what I got here for you guys? Sure, see if it works. Yeah. Okay. We'll go here. Okay. So uh, on on the web tonight, I, uh, we've got three announcements. Uh, can you see this? Okay. Yeah, it's come up. Okay, so we've got uh, James D. Francesco speaking at uh, UVix Open House this Wednesday, and it's on astrobiology and the search for alien life. So that sounds like it would be good. It starts at 7.30 p.m. And this is part of Karun's uh, 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 UVic Observatory. Open. And that's accessible with just that link, correct? Yeah, you just click on this link and you're there. At 7.30, you don't have to uh, register. Uh, it says my internet connection is unstable. Are you guys okay? Yeah, so far. <laughs> and then uh, baby planets to black holes. This is actually a, probably a repeat of Dr. Gerard uh, Chibben's talk that he gave uh, to us. It was possibly the last talk that was given before COVID. I can't quite remember. But at any rate, he's going to be talking about ELMA and a New Horizon Telescope. And that's a Friday on October 2nd at 11.30 a.m. And we got this from the Vancouver Island Engineering Society and they invited us along. So you can click on the, on this link and, and it will take you to the site if you want to uh, register. And then uh, Jim Hesser sent this link about uh, quant the quantum physicist as a casual detective. And that's with the Perimeter Institute. And uh, that's going to be at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on October 7th. And uh, that might be uh, interested for people who are interested in the physics and, and, uh, uh, and astrophysics as a part of portion of astronomy. So those are three great things. And the other deal is if I go here, and I have to go, where is my thing? What's happening at RAS this week? Uh, this is a thing I'm uh, tirelessly uh, promoting. Uh, September 30th, the Victoria uh, RAS Toronto Speaker Night. Uh, they have a, the topic is how to destroy a planet. Now, I think we're pretty, we're doing, we're right on track with that. So uh, that's something to try. So that again is on uh, uh, Wednesday at 7.30, uh, the Eastern time. So that it would be uh, um, 4.30 Pacific time. So you could see that and then watch James's talk. So you've got the evening plan for you. And on October 1st, uh, the, the, uh, the Explore the Universe is going to be on Mars and the planets, and you can register for that. And uh, the October 7th, a second meeting of the Ottawa Centre, 
uh, is kind of interesting. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Webb's Space Telescope, a talk on that by Dr. Rene Doyon. And I just read uh, just uh, yesterday, I think, that they postponed the launch until uh, Halloween in 2021. So uh, that's the latest time that that's happened. And the other thing on this thing is that the robotic telescope competition, this month's target, uh, if you want to download the data, is the Helix Nebula. And the only other thing I'd mention is next week, if you haven't already mentioned it, Chris, is we're going to have our meeting for the October meeting next week. And our, our guest is uh, Luca uh, from Edmonton. And he's going to be talking about his way of uh, constructing these beautiful, uh, uh, I guess they're combinations of a bunch of different uh, images. And uh, he was on the, uh, it was kind of neat because the, the uh, a uh, photo of interest was selected for astronomy photo of the day for uh, the summer, the, the fall solstice, uh, the fall equinox. So uh, that, that should be a great talk. So that's next week. And what we'll try and do is if some of the club officers want to give a short report of their uh, activities like the attendance and, and uh, bank balances and stuff like that, we can integrate that into the talk as well. So uh, that's on uh, Monday the 5th of October, it should be a great talk. So a great, great session. So I'm looking forward to that. So with that, I'll turn it back to you. Uh, right. Breaking news. Oh, wait, pardon me for a second. We, Very nice images of Jupiter. Uh, they have images of Jupiter. Excellent. <laughs> so so uh, there, there's a, a pandemonium here, a great deal of excitement and jubilation. So uh, I'll turn it back to you, Chris. And if we uh, have any other breaking news, we'll interrupt. Nice. Great, Bye, everyone. Thanks, Sir Rich. So, what we want to do now, I would think. So, um, does anybody else have anything they would like to share at this point? Okay. Well, got it. So we sent the, uh, the, uh, Maybe I'll just turn their sound off. And I'll, 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 I'm sorry. There we go. Done. <laughs> um, so, I think some people may have participated in International Observe the Moon. Hint, Randy. <laughs> I don't know if you want to say. I see you had posted something. I don't know if you want to share uh, any comments. I can. I can put that up. I sure. can put that picture up. Uh, I saw naked eye as we were walking back from wine and cheese at the neighbor's house last night <laughs> through a hole in the clouds. And uh, Lori saw a couple of really skookum rainbows, and. Um, and she took, and Reg took a couple of the pictures as well. Okay, so now I can share. Um, <coughs> sorry, gotta get this. So uh, this was my uh, logbook for uh, for Saturday night. Uh, International Observe the Moon Night is always on the um, Saturday closest to the first quarter moon in September. It's a clever time because you know a lot of people think that the time to see the moon is the full moon, but you see so much more close to the quarter moon because you have the Terminator cutting through there. And it's at a lovely time of the evening. And it really was a beautiful, clear night for us that night. Uh, and one of the wonderful things, that, so this is the Mare Imbrium. I have a uh, Newtonian, so it's at the bottom, but this is the north part of the, of the um, moon. And the easy way to recognize the Mare Imbrium is it's got this half moon out cut out of it um, and that is the uh, Sinus Iridium, the, uh, the Bay of Rainbows. And it is one of the really, really wonderful features on the moon. And what was lovely 
is the rim of it was way off past the Terminator. It was just, it was just beautiful. Um, a feature which is very good for testing your telescope is if you can see little craterlets in Plato. Plato is perfectly flat and there are these tiny craters in there. I've, I can't see it with my six inch, but you, you often see very nice pictures of that. Another thing is, uh, this was a day after it were really nice, but you have Jupiter, Saturn. And so um, it was Thursday, the moon was here. And then on Friday, the moon was here. And then on Saturday, the moon had continued all the way back to past here. So it was a really fun suite of days to watch it go by. I was very happy with this picture. Some, some days I like my pictures more than others. This was a good one. Nice. Very nice. An amazing amount of detail in there. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have, I, I uh, don't know with this, how do I, ah, that's better. Yeah. I felt very good with that one. Yeah, no, it's that, must, that must have taken you quite a while. Uh, it's about an hour. Wow. I don't know. You guys take longer than that to set up your telescope, so. <laughs> very nice. It, that was really a lovely sight. Um, what was it, two nights ago, Randy? Yeah. NASA put on a live telecast and I kind of watch it every once in a while and it was really fun. It was just all these people talking about different aspects of the moon for hours and hours. I didn't I pay attention. I just jumped into it every once in a while. I love myself. I love the neutral color play and, and your use of white and black on that gray book. It is just stunning, Randy. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. And um, maybe I'll just uh, jump in here with uh, something completely different. So this is, um, Reg had mentioned that Luca had an uh, astronomy photo of the day. So hopefully that will show up now. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. So this is of course a compliment <coughs> and you may recognize Edmonton there. And here's the uh, description of what he's done there. So he's got uh, uh, many, many photographs um, there with showing the different tracks that the sun has taken. Do you see the river uh, freezing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's quite an amazing scene where there's snow in half the picture and not in the other. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a composite of the of yeah. the landscape. Yeah. Yeah. So if um, you do want to see these, you go to uh, apod.nasa.gov um, and they have a, an, an archive. So they show you, <coughs> you go there, you get today's photo, but you go back a few mm -hmm. days and this is um, September 22nd's photo. That, that, that bridge down there in the foreground is the Dawson Bridge. Oh, okay. When I, when I was much younger and more foolish, I would run across that thing and down the river valley and back across the low level bridge and back up to the wide downtown. <coughs> Dawson Bridge is, is newer? Hmm? Is the Dawson Bridge newer than the high level or low level? Yeah, yeah. I remember those ones. Oh, it's about the same vintage. It's, it's a little newer than the low level. Hmm. Used to play soccer right behind where he's standing here. Oh. <laughs> so. Anyway, so this is our, uh, uh, so Luca will speak to us. Uh, next week about some of the, I guess, the techniques he's used to, uh, to do some of these wonderful shots. And I think we may have seen some of, I don't know if my, uh, my pointer is showing up there, but I think we've seen some where he's had them, things going past buildings like the moon and the sun and things like that. Um, here's an example where, you know, we're right in line <laughs> with the, mm -hmm. the towers here. Anyways. Pretty sharp. Hey. Does anybody have anything else this evening or um, or Reg of any updates from up at the VCO in the dark? 
Let's see if he can hear me. Ah, there he is. Yeah, he popped up. Hello, <laughs> rascals. Um, what we have now is we've uh, got Jupiter in the sights, and uh, we are having trouble getting some of our eyepieces to bring it in. It's quite low and it's quite uh, blurry. So what we're going to do is try and focus our uh, camera, uh, single lens uh, reflex camera on it, because Jupiter is a nice thing. We can use live view to, to uh, focus that crisply, and then we'll be in good shape for um, looking at some star fields and getting some better images of them that are higher on uh, in the, uh, above the horizon. So that's our plan right now. So we are still victorious and giddy with uh, excitement that we actually lined things up. So, so uh, things are going really well up here. So I'll uh, pass it back to you. Are, is the uh, meeting gonna wind down soon? Well, I think unless somebody else has something to share that uh, may be almost it for this week, maybe a shorter night, earlier night. Grant, for any hockey fans out there, Tampa Bay just won the Stanley Cup. Oh my. <laughs> Do nothing. Well, there you go. Yeah. There is no God. <laughs> <laughs> At least not 2020. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if anybody else has any other questions, comments, or um, so again, next week um, we'll have Luca from Rask Edmonton uh, talking to us and possibly a kind of a little summary of what's going on with the center as a um as our uh, october meeting um we will be um the next week is thanksgiving so we will um not have an astro cafe on what well, would that be october the 12th and then we'll resume again on october 19th um we will be uh, for those of you who are active observers we'll be um hopefully hearing more about what may or may not be possible with the VCO going forward. Um, it's encouraging that we appear to have a telescope in place and uh, it may have, in fact even be working. So if we can get the computer working um, and get all that tested out, I guess um, that'll, uh, that'll make that a little more possible, um, that part of it. Um, Reg, I don't know if you have anything more you wanted to say. Well, I just wanted to thank you for hosting this, Chris. And, and the other thing, I'm doing this all through uh, using my phone as a hotspot, and I've got a really hot pocket right now. This thing has been working <laughs> over time. We're about to have meltdown. <laughs> yeah, I think so. At any rate, guys, have a good night. Yeah. So long for so the PCO. Yeah, thanks, Reg. We'll save your phone. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks very much. Any, any final comments? No. Is that that good, everyone? Well, there's been, um, yeah, I think our, our, our shortest Astro Cafe so far, but um, looks like we'll have some interesting talks next week. And with a week of clearer skies predicted, maybe we'll have some photos to share for future nights and some observations. And uh, so anyways, I hope people can get out and have a look at the night sky, especially as it's here earlier. It's amazing what the difference the uh, equinox makes. It's funny to think that we'd be sitting through a often an hour and a half of Astro Cafe and it'd still be quite light out and here it is we're uh, it's completely dark. dark so yes. last call <laughs> darker days ahead there we go yep <laughs> thanks everybody okay well thanks for joining us and we'll uh, we'll talk again we'll hopefully see you next week thanks Ridge for trying this good night good night everybody good night. thanks Ridge <laughs>